B-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause only this is ready Forget about it Goodbye Hold on, we just saying hi Five somebody Rise up weekdays Catch us live Somebody let's go Good afternoon Good evening and good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in good spirits. This is a tough one. I will be honest. This is not going to be a very easy one, unfortunately. But we definitely need to talk about it. Um, this has been a very, this is a very tough day in general for a, for everyone, a lot of people, um, for various reasons. Um, you know, there's the anniversary of the Idaho 4 situation. We can't forget that. Um, and then, of course, so many other things to to be to be upset about. There's a lot of things going on overseas still to this day that are not getting any better. Things are not slowing down. Things are revving up even more, it seems like. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. But nonetheless, we got some other bad news, which is unfortunate. But I wanted to share this with you guys because this is a story. This is a, a, a case that we were covering for a while. And I wanted to make sure you guys got this. And for those of y'all who don't know this story, I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of this, that story as well. So you guys can see this. We can watch this as a family. Not watch it, but discuss it as a family. Because I got to be real. We don't have great news. But then we have even worse news, and that's this monster is allegedly still out here on the run. He's out. They, this person, is out here in these wilderness streets right in front of us, right under our noses, guys, which is absolutely crazy. But we need to talk about this because the more we talk about this, we can get justice for this young woman. Okay? So do me a favor. All right. If you can, that would really mean a lot. Hit that like button down below. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you hit that reaction button over there as well. I'd love to see the, the likes on YouTube go past 300 likes. I know a bunch of y'all starting to file in. You know, come on in. The water's just fine. Promise you. I have plans on doing another live in a little bit, covering another story, another case. Like I said, many stories to tell before I sleep. About to tell you guys another story, cover another one. So be on the lookout for that when the notification goes on. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching this show for the very first time. Make sure that notifi notification, notification, notification bell is turned on and set to all so that you know whenever I go live, whenever I upload. Because I know it seems like you guys aren't really getting the the my, my videos as I'm putting them out. So please make sure that the notification bell is set to all so that you know whenever I'm going live or whenever I upload because it'd be random. Okay. All right. We got some things we got to talk about, and it's really not the greatest news, but we're, I'm going to we're going to talk about it. We got to because that's what we do as a family. Okay. This is what we do as a family. All right. Anyway, let's get it straight into it. Okay. Because I got another live in a couple hours. I promise you that. There's another live coming in a couple hours. Okay. And we're going to be talking about some stuff over there on that story as well. Some crazy stuff going on on the, on the West Coast that we need to talk about. Okay. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, wait till when I go live in a couple hours. But I did want to give you guys this story because, again, this is not the greatest, the greatest one. We have talked about this young woman before. We have brought her up many a times before. Um, but I did want to bring this up because we now have some new information. And, and the story I'm talking about, the case that I'm talking about, is of Jennifer Mendez Olascoaga. And, again, no one's ever told me if I'm saying her last name right or not. It's frustrating, but I've heard, it, I've heard her last name, Olascoaga. And I've seen, I've heard Olescoaga. I don't know which one is right. So I'm just riding with it. Okay. All right. But nonetheless, uh, we have got to talk about this. This young woman, she's 24 years old. She was a te teaching assistant out in Dallas. 
she went missing after dropping off her friend at a uh, a mobile home park. She drove off and she was supposed to show up to work the very next day to school. The very next day, she did not show. The, her friends and family got concerned because that's very much not how she, right? This is not how she does things, all right? And so that's when they reported her missing. Now, it was weeks. We talked about this, but while they were looking for her, the family received very creepy, uncomfortable text messages basically saying certain things along the lines of, you'll never find her and you're next type of thing. It's been absolutely crazy. This story has been wild. We're going to be looking at a couple things. We got a couple articles we're going to be looking at. But just a few weeks ago, because it, it feels like it was eons ago that I talked about this, guys. All right? It feels like it was eons ago. All right? But there was reports of remains being found in the area near where her car was. Now, those remains were not identified. But, you know, you do the math, right? You look, you look at these things, you look through, okay? You, 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 you see that they're looking at a particular area and they find her in that very area. I mean, you do, you do the math, next thing you know, boom. Unfortunately, this is where we're at now, okay? So let me share this with you guys. Okay. Hold on one second, guys. I am not tolerating any of this BS. Bye bye. Moving on. Okay. Mods, I appreciate if you guys get aggressive. Okay. Thank you. I love you guys. But moving on, I need to tell my stories, all right? But as I said, and I'm going to repeat myself because I can, the thing is here is that you go into this area, you, they're searching in this particular area, and then suddenly they find her, okay? Or they find remains in the area or near the car in which the car was parked off to the side of the road, and they find rem remains exactly in that same area. I mean, you do the math. Instantly, boom, you're going to sit there. Unfortunately, you're going to go, okay, this must be, this must be our girl, right? And it looks like, I mean, it is very much. Weeks later, we have finally found out that that indeed, those remains are that of Jennifer Mendez Olescoaga, okay? 25, 24-year-old, 24-year-old girl, 24-year-old woman teaching assistant from Dallas. She dropped her friend off, drove off, and she was never heard or spoken to from again. Okay? This is very frustrating and very sad because at the end of the day, as I said before, and I'm going to repeat myself again, that this monster or monsters that took this young woman's life is still on the run here. They're still free. There's, they were still the ones sending out creepy text messages to family members and friends. So the question still remains, what happened to Jennifer and who did this? Somebody obviously had access to her phone numbers, was able to send messages to through a untraceable, allegedly an untraceable phone number, a, bo a burner phone, basically, to all her friends and family, basically saying some really creepy stuff. And now we're looking at this. Now we're seeing this. And this person still not, hasn't been caught yet? It's very odd. So like I said, we're going to be working backwards. So I'm telling you guys the information that we know now. We're going to play a little bit trip down memory lane just to refresh all y'all's memory some of y'all still new to this story but and that's the thing this is a story that should have been out there i mean i know that there's a multitude of other cases out here that need 
uh, 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 some light under the sun as well. But this one as well, just the fact that there was creepy text messages being sent after she went missing and all that. I, I, I keep wondering, why did this not get in the front of, of it be at the tip of everybody's brain, right? Tip of everybody's tongue. What happened to Jennifer, right? Or at least at the time, where is Jennifer? And now that the remains have been confirmed as hers, okay? It does make you wonder, then what actually happened to her? So let's get into this. So investigators found human remains while searching for a Dallas ISD teacher assistant who has been missing for nearly three weeks. So. One second. Hold on. I want to make sure I have the right stuff. Hold up. Uno momento, por favor. There we go. Had the wrong thing up. Just wanted to make sure I had the right thing. So, those those remains that I just talked to you about have been identified as Jennifer. So, let's get into this. So, remains found in October. It's been a minute, guys. It's been a couple weeks. All right. Near the I-20 in Mesquite. Have been identified as missing D Dallas ISD teacher teacher's aide Jennifer Mendez Olascuaga, according to the Dallas Medical Examiner's Office. This morning, the Dallas County Medical Examiner's Office confirmed the the uh, the descent the decadent, I guess the decadent from the the from the recovery was, I, I guess the descendant, yeah. I think that's what they're saying. Uh, from the from the recovery was Jennifer Mendez Olascuaga. This is still an active investigation because the person's still on the loose, guys. The medical examiner's office has yet to rule on cause of demise, COD. We got to use these code words, unfortunately. However, we are continuing to investigate her demise in relation to her disappearance and are examining all the evidence available as well as interviewing any witnesses that may come forward. This is what the Mesquite police said in a statement. So Mesquite police said the discovery of the remains was made by the Segoville uh, police back in October as they searched for Mendez Olascuaga. 24-year-old 20, uh, Jennifer was last seen on September 27th dropping off a friend at a mobile home park near Highway, uh, Highway 175 in Segoville. Her, her car was found abandoned without her purse or phone on Lawson Road the next morning. Now, one thing that they say uh, is that her, not only her, her phone, okay, um, apparently her phone and purse were, were taken, but her wallet was still in the back of the car. It was found in the car. And of course, that's what, you, what she uses to spend money, whatever. One of her friends, or I think it was a family member, if I remember correctly, said she never leaves anywhere without her wallet. She never leaves anywhere without her phone. And of course, I get it. You know what I mean? Decedent? Oh, thank you, Jennifer White. Decedent. That's a new one for me. I'm sorry. Thank you. I learned something new today. Okay, decedent. Thank you so much. Okay. But again, when they sit there and say, hey, she would never leave with her phone, or she would never leave without her wallet at least, and her wallet was still in the car, that obviously that screams foul play in my personal opinion. She takes her phone, she takes her purse, but her wallet is still in the car. Then also when they said, when they found the car on the side, when they found the car on the side of the road, the the seat the car seat, the driver's car seat, was back a little bit further than what it usually is, meaning that there could have been a bigger person or a taller person or a person with longer legs driving the car and then ditching the car. And maybe they didn't realize that maybe through the tussle, whatever, all right, she left her wallet behind. 
And then, of course, she was found in the same area that her car was. So she didn't, they didn't move her or she didn't travel very far. But let me finish this piece because this is very important. This last sentence is a sentence, in my personal opinion, is extremely important. And I may let me highlight it for you guys. Okay. No suspects have been identified. No arrests have been made at this time, according to police. Again, no suspects, because I like to repeat myself, no suspects have been identified and no arrests have been made at this time, according to police. So right now, somebody's out there, somebody bad is out here in these streets doing no good, maybe plotting for his their next move or their next tragedy that they're going to cause. Again, I keep wondering because I know that there's been a lot of speculation. Some people out here were going, oh, yeah, this oh, this screams uh, Carly Russell. O the only reason why they said Carly Russell was because of the text messages. They're like, why would anyone why would anyone text anyone that kind of stuff? It seems a bit cryptic. It's creepy. But at the same time, uh, could it be someone, uh, you know, crying, crying for attention? Is this somebody trying to get attention? Well, now that we know she is, now that we know the end result here, the tragic end. I mean, let's keep it real. Carly Russell? I think not. And I've never thought that. I know a lot of people have, but I never have personally. Now, I want to go back to this article here. Okay. But. Again, they said human remains. This is when they found her or they found the remains, but she wasn't identified at that time. And that was damn near almost a month ago, y'all. Three, we're three, di three days shy. Three days shy. We're three days shy of a month, basically, since the remains have been found. And today is the day that they finally say, yes, that is Jennifer. It took them almost damn near a whole month to identify her. And I'm wondering why. Why did it take so long? But her remains were found in the same area as her car. Because they ditched her car on the side of the road and within the same area she was found. Let me just share this with you guys again. And this is what we covered a couple weeks ago. Shoot, almost a month ago, y'all. Okay. But investigators find human remains while searching for Jennifer, okay, who has been search who has been missing for nearly three weeks. So Jennifer, of course, 24, was last seen at the Quick Trip gas station on Highway 175 and Belt Line Road in Dallas on September 27th. Security video shows her buying food and drink, filling up with gas, and then driving off. That was shortly after she dropped a friend off at a mobile home, a mobile home park in Seagullville. Mimi, thank you so much for the 95 Swiss francs. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you so very much for your support. Moving on, family members said they never, she never made it back home. When we found out that she had never made it, uh, made it home that Wednesday night, it was a hint like, hey, something's going on. She always makes it home. She was very punctual at work. She didn't show up the next day. We said that was not okay. Something's going on. And this is what one of her friends, her, uh, uh, one of her cousins said. Family found her white Buick LaCrosse in Mesquite near the intersection of Mil Milham and Lawson Roads. Her wallet was still inside the vehicle. Again, remember, one of her cousins said she would never leave anywhere without anywhere without her wallet. So it doesn't make any sense. Police investigators and the Texas Rangers found the human remains on Thursday in a wooded area south of Interstate 20, just east of Lumley Road. That's less than a mile away from where her car was found. Crazy. Now, of course, they're working. This was weeks ago, but they were now working on identifying the remains. Now, the, the thing is, you know, for me, this is it's, it's very, very frustrating because 
<clears throat> again, this is a story that did not really get out there. People, it, it was kind of a sprinkling of information. Some people talked about it. Some people didn't. Uh, and, and I thought it was absolute trash in my personal opinion. Um, you know, this is somebody who I feel deserved as much uh, uh, light under the sun, um, at, at least within this, this particular case. Because again, now we have this person who's out here in these streets up to no good. Someone took this woman's life, and we still don't know why. They also still sent out text messages. I'm going to keep repeating that until I'm blue in the face because that is the part that shows that there's some sort of foul play here and that there's some crazy lunatic out here who's watched way too many Scream movies free and could go out here lurking and do it again. It's insane to me, but, you know, I'm going to play a little bit of a, a news clip. I've played this before, but we're going to ride through it again because, hey, I love you guys, and you guys deserve a little bit of a refresher here. And again, this is the wildest, well, extremely heartbreaking story, but she needs justice just like everybody else. Let's take a look at this, guys. Police in Texas Rangers are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman with friends and family growing concerned over mysterious text messages they received. Take a look at Jennifer Mendez Olascoaga. The investigators say she vanished last Wednesday evening after dropping off one of her friends at a trailer park. Well, family members later found her car abandoned on the side of the road. They made that discovery the next morning, with the family telling police that Jennifer's friends had been receiving strange text messages. Listen to this. Things like, quote, are you missing someone? You'll never find her, and you know you'll never see her again. Police say the content of those texts does point to foul play. Let's bring in News Nation national security contributor Tracy Walder. Uh, Tracy, thank you so much for your time on this. There are still so many unanswered questions here, but what is first likely going on behind the scenes in this investigation? Well, thank you so much for having me, Nicole. I think first things first, they are absolutely examining her digital history. I think because of these text messages clearly pointing to foul play, although you know we don't know for certain, they are really looking at her digital trail. What was her social media like in the hours just after she was last seen, which was about 8 p.m.? Uh, what was her call log like? What were her text messages like? I also think that they're probably tracing the origins of those text messages. My gut tells me it's probably from a burner phone, which is obviously going to be difficult to track. Um, but yep. if it's not, they'll be able to figure out who sent them very, very quickly. Yeah. Ex now, listen, uh, uh, before we continue on, uh, I do want to say, uh, yeah, damn right. They should be doing everything, everything they can looking through all of her digitals all of her social media, her computers, her laptops, her tablets. Shoot, her, her, if she has an iWatch or an Apple Watch, I call it an iWatch. I don't know why I keep saying iWatch, but you know what I'm saying. Apple Watch, what have you. At the end of the day, we're going to find out more truth about what happened here, or at least what could have brought us to where she lost her life, right? Through her digital footprint, her digital fingerprints. Because this is, this is insane. And I get it, the, the burner phone. And I've said this on another show before about this case. Can't they go back and trace the burner phone? Find out they bought it from Verizon or something? And go back and, and maybe catch that person going in there on camera, paying for the actual phone? Didn't they do that for Rex Hewerman? You know, Gilgo Baggins, didn't they do that for him? So you're telling me you can't do that for her? And I get it. That's years and years of research and investigation on their part with Rex Hewerman. But at the same time, they were still able to trace back his burner phone, y'all, all the way back and then catch him red handed, walking in, paying for it to re upload or re uh, uh, fill up or something like that. Uh, his his phone paying cold hard cash in a Verizon store. So can't they do the same thing here? Retrace the burner phone in some sort of way? Maybe they bought it at some random kiosk at, at a mall. I mean, I'm just saying, like, there's got to be a way around this. 
Because it doesn't seem to make any sense that this young woman drops her friend off, drives off, and then poof, disappears like this. And again, the part that's even more disturbing, yeah, reload. Thank you. Thank you, Caddy. I'm just, I'm just out of it. Caddy, thank you. Reload that phone, right? But the other part that's really disturbing to me as well is you got her on surveillance camera going and getting gas, and she's chill, y'all. She's absolutely chill. No issues, no problems, no nothing. She's getting a big gulp or whatever. A 32 ounce. She's thinking about maybe getting some more food. She's filling, filling up her car. She seems very nonchalantly cool, calm, and collected. Walking in that gas station and walking out, filling the gas, getting in her car, and driving off. So what happened? And could there be friends involved, connected to this situation? That's what I'd like to know as well. It just doesn't make any sense. One other thing, too, is that they have not given us the cause of demise. They have not said how she passed. So we don't know that piece of information yet. But still, if they're still saying that they need information, that this young woman they're not giving off the vibe like this person did this unthinkable thing to themselves. You see what I'm saying? They have not, beautiful messy ball, they have not said what the manner of her demise is. They're asking for help, though. If anyone has any information, please call dot, 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 right? So if they're asking for that kind of information... You know for a fact foul play was a part in this situation. For real, for real. Okay? But I still want to know why haven't they done any of the due, like their due diligence as far as deep diving into cell phones, iPads, you know, tablets, computers, just to see if there was any type of correspondence with somebody. Maybe she met somebody on, on some dating app. You never know, guys. You just never know. The origin of this, where it all started, could have started digitally, but then again, it may not have. Let's continue here. Exactly, because something that certainly stood out to me here, I, and I don't know if it did to you, but how unusual is it, you know, for for loved ones, family, friends uh, of a missing person to receive not only these type of taunting messages, but also they report getting these messages not only after she went missing, but also before she went missing and and during this time that she's, you know, allegedly it happened. What stands out about that to you? So it's very unusual. And obviously, I, I don't think this is the connection here, but it's back, it's actually reminiscent of what we saw with Z the Zodiac Killer and, and other serial killers that sent messages to family members or the press, sort of taunting them um, about the people that they had either killed or kidnapped. It, it's rare. It's not typically something we see. Or if we do see them, then we see them with basically ransom activity, wanting something back in return. This is just taunting to taunt, which is definitely definitely unusual. All right, so Tracy, you know, earlier there was this taunting to taunt. Now, I know this is just, you know, them speculating, putting in their just just their expert opinion. They're not boots on the ground or anything of that sort, but at the same time, for them to sit there and say, "Hey, this is a taunting type of thing." Damn right. It's a taunting it's it's very taunting. You know, it's very taunting. Taunterific. Whatever you want to call it. Okay, the tauntification of these text messages clearly show that somebody is getting off on this, man. They like this. Like I said, this is some somebody who watched way too many way too many movies, way too many scream movies, right? That's how it feels to me. Hello, Sydney. What's your favorite scary movie? That's what it feels like a little bit. You know? You know, uh you're never going to find her. You're next. What the hell is that? That is a, a horror movie line. Okay? With the damsel in distress, you know, the final girl just, you know, you know what I'm talking about. We've all seen them movies. Okay? They're a dime a dozen. But the fact that this person is sending out this text message in real life shows how messed up this person is. But again, who is this person? And why would they be going out of their way like this? 
Why would they be going out of their way like this with a burner phone? Is this somebody that she really knew? Was she connected to this person? And how was she connected to this person? You know, and it, hold on. Fly Girl just said something. Um, and it's Rachel. But uh, Pascal, I was, I was just thinking, what if this guy that they're looking for, what if this is the guy they are looking for in the Rachel Morin case? You know what? I, oof, I don't know. I, I he does, he, that guy has gotten around. I mean, he was in LA, then he was all, you know, or he was in California, then he's all, all the way in the, on the East coast. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty crazy how much he's moved around and it takes two seconds to hop on a plane or take a bus and, and, and move around. And clearly that guy is still on the loose as we speak. So anything is possible when it comes to that. But it, you know, when I, when I look at something like this, I feel like th this is completely disconnected. I don't think this is connected to Rachel Morin at all. Um, this is very odd. It, it doesn't fit the same MO. It doesn't fit the same actions that this monster that did what he did to Rachel Morin up there. It doesn't match. He wasn't sending text messages to friends and family after her demise, after she lost her life. You see what I'm saying? That person kicked rocks. He just did what he did, and he kicked rocks, just like what he did in California. He got out of that surveillance footage where he walked out the front door. He just kicked rocks. That's all he's doing. He did his crime, walked out the front door. Then all of a sudden, he's on a bus somewhere else. And I think it's the same thing with the Rachel Moore. And he went over there. He did his thing, and he kicked rocks. See what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with that. With this, does not fit. It just doesn't. And it, I mean, shoot. I, wilder things have happened in the world of true crime. Real talk. Wilder things have happened. And if, it, but if it is him, this would be very out of character from what I'm, I'm seeing him, that guy doing so far. This to me seems like a little bit more personal. This to me seems like this is somebody that knew her, knew of her, was an acquaintance of some sort. How and why would she, why would this person have phone numbers, and going and texting to the other people those things. Why? Why would they? It just doesn't make sense. Unless this is just a sociopathic psychopath that loves getting off on scaring the bejesus out of the, the victim's family and loved ones. Because it just, like I said, why why would he go out of their way to do this? Like I said, this is like a bad horror movie. You're next. You know what I'm saying? It just feels like that. So when we hear this, I'm going, wait a second. Somebody must know him or know this person. But then again, we don't know the matter in which she lost her life. I'm sure when the autopsy report comes out, we will talk about it. You know, for a fact, we're going to talk about it. Okay? Because I am fully invested in this story. And in this case, but something ain't mathing. A burner phone was used. Somebody took the time to type in in a in these cryptic tech, cryptic text messages to family and friends. And I still want to know why. I think we all want to know why. Okay. But this is odd. Very, very odd. And of course, knee-jerk reaction from a lot of people like, oh, this is Cap. Oh, this is Cap. She just wanted attention, yo. This is just another, just a, a, another Carly Russell situation. Well, I don't think so much. Not so much anymore. Okay, guys? So we're going to find out what's going on, hopefully, as time goes on. But let's let's continue. And I appreciate you guys brainstorming with me. This is when I love the, the family discussions. I love them a lot, especially all y'all who are respectful. I do re really appreciate it. Let's continue. Kidnapped girl in New York. Luckily, she was found. But are missing adult cases handled differently than missing kids? I mean, what is the protocol for someone who is an adult? 
So, you know, yes, uh, to answer your question in short, yes, missing children cases are handled differently and that police get on them right away. Typically, in the case of a missing adult, it is within 24 to 48 hours that, that you can then declare them missing. I think in this case, because they had those text messages and because the vehicle was found, they were able to declare her missing a lot sooner. So I think in this case, they had that on their side and really a longer, a, a shorter runway in terms of investigation and having the tools that they needed to declare her missing much earlier. And that brings a whole host of other resources, like you had mentioned before, the Texas Rangers. And it sounds like a lot of people right now, you know, really love this woman. They're worried about her. What would be your advice to Jennifer's family and friends right now? I know that this is going to sound strange, but I think answering some of those text messages and trying to see if you can keep um, an open line of communication with them, because even though it's a burner phone, one of the things that they can do is perhaps geolocate where those calls are coming from. And the, yes, yes, geolocate them mugs. But why is it taking us so many damn weeks? It's been damn near over a month. It's been well over a month, babies. Like, damn. Damn, let me let me let me let me let her finish preaching. But I'm just saying, do you locate that mother? You know what I'm saying? Re re relocate that mother. Shut your mouth, okay? And that where those text messages, excuse me, are coming from. Dag and Nabby. I think that would also be helpful. Also, reaching out to the media, getting her face in front of as many people as possible. Also, where she was taken from in Mesquite. I-20 is there. That is a very major thoroughfare. It's not very far from where I am now. And it's not that far to Louisiana and other states. So I think it's also important to get the word out to other police departments, perhaps in Shreveport and in, in cities of states close by. All right. Well, former FBI agent. Yes. See, but see, but the, but see, uh, of course, we don't know what's going on behind the, the curtain. OK, we don't know what's going on going on backstage behind the scenes when it comes to the police. We don't know what they're doing as far as their their investigation, what they're deep diving into. We don't know any of that ish. But I'm telling you right now, yeah, geolocate. And I'm hoping that they are, or at least I hope they have. But that, I feel, would be having them zeroing in on that culprit, on the assailant, on the bad guy. Them, like, you know, helicopters from above crashing in from the from the sunroof and everything, you know, you're, you know, hands up. You know what I'm saying? Some BK stuff, some Brian Koberger ish. Come on in. Okay. Disrupt that mother lover's time while they're eating Cheetos and, and picking lint out of their belly button while they're watching family feud. You know what I'm saying? Please. And thank you. Okay. But they haven't done that yet, but they have not done that yet. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yes, I said Cheetos picking out lint from the belly button watching Family Feud. Yes, I did. I did. Because you know some of y'all do that. <laughs> y'all get real deep in that belly button too, okay? And then some of y'all smell it sometimes. Moving on. <laughs> Jules, thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome to the family. Well, thank you so much. Welcome to the family, Jules. Thank you so much. And just like Jules, you can hit that join button down below and become a member. So consider doing that today. Support the channel. You know, uh, the, these 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 lights. <laughs> we got a lot of lights in the background, y'all. OK, these Christmas lights don't 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 Christmas themselves. OK, this is this is by magic and love and holiday cheer and money. <laughs> so please <laughs> support if you can hit that join button down below that'd be greatly greatly appreciated please and thank you okay and i hope i hope everybody's uh, uh holidays are uh that too you guys deserve it we all deserve it with all the gloom and doom in the world we all deserve as much happiness and grand grand beautiful things as we can okay um, but let me get you guys a, a few more things. we got a couple more things. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. We still got a few more things to talk about. And again, it's still, of course, it's still revolving around the uh, Jennifer Olescuaga situation. Um, but I do want to share with you guys. Now, I've shared this, this with you guys before, but I do want to share with you guys this. Okay. Um, this is very important. 
this is the last moments that we saw this young woman alive. This is the gas station footage. And this is, again, she looks like she's she just chilling, y'all. I'm going to play this too, guys, so that you guys can see this. But she's chilling just fine. Closes the, like, the, there's no, like, oh, I am scared out of my mind. I am nervous. She is sauntering in that gas station. And when I say sauntering, she is sauntering. She is fine. There is no, there is no uh, uh, a sign of stress. And, and, and let me tell you, if I have some monster in my car, let's just say, I'm not doing this. In fact, I'm not hungry. In fact, I'm not thirsty. I'm scared out of my mind. I'm not going in. In fact, I'm not even going inside that gas station unless I have to pay, like prepay the pump. You know, sometimes those card readers don't work, right? She seemed to be doing just fine. She was thinking about her next day at work. She's looking forward to maybe catching up on her stories on her Netflix or something like that. Maybe playing some COD on, on, you know, on whatever gaming console she has. And she was about to just go to sleep, wake up, and lather, rinse, repeat with life. She looks fine in this situation. Not once does she look like she's in bad shape. Trust me, she would have beelined. She would have been stuck by that, that car. That person, if there was a person in the car, they would have been like, yo, no, you ain't moving nowhere. You're putting that gas in that car. You're getting your ass back in this car, and that's it. And you driving. And guess what? That she did the exact opposite of that, yo. She did the exact opposite of that. I'm going to play it again for y'all. I'm just going to do a smaller. But again, you can see right here, it doesn't make sense. She seems fine. 110% fine. So something happened after she left this gas station. In fact, there was more information saying that she went down a different route than she usually does. It's not a route that she normally takes. And I keep wondering why. What was, what was the route? Why was that route different this time? And again, I, I keep saying was she hollering at some boy? Was she was somebody hollering at her on, on the DMs? Because a lot of sometimes this stuff goes down in the DMs, y'all. So did was she on Tinder, Bumble, any of the other ones that are called you know for for the Hinge? You know what I'm saying? Any of these other dating apps? Was she on any of those corresponding with somebody? Let's be real. And they haven't given us anything except they just finally said that she is identified. And that's the other thing, too. Haven't you noticed that a lot of times whenever it's like a high profile case, a lot of times these high profile cases, it's 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 I mean, it almost feels like seconds later we find out that that person it's been confirmed that they, you know, they identified the body, so on and so forth. Why did this one take so damn long? She'd only been missing for a few weeks. I'm just asking for a friend. Okay? Just seems a bit odd. I'm just asking the questions. Okay? I'm just asking the questions because I want justice. I want her to be... I want her to get the justice that she deserves. It's just so frustrating that we don't know a damn thing. They haven't given us anything, y'all. She, ha they have not given us anything. Um, well, and let me uh, play a little bit more. This is just another one, just a little bit of a trip down memory lane again, okay? But please do me a favor, and like I said, I'm just doing this because we know the we know the devastating results. We know the truth now. She is she has lost her life, but at the same time, she still has not gotten she has still not gotten justice. So this is the reason why I'm bringing out all these clues so that maybe somebody out there is able to piece them all together and, and, and Sherlock Holmes this, this be, because this young woman deserves justice and she deserves justice as quickly as possible because why there's a monster on the loose. If 
there is 100% foul play here. There is a monster still on the loose right now as we speak in the Texas area. Unless that person has kicked rocks somewhere else. But hit that like button down below, please, and thank you. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. You know your boy's working hard out here in these streets to give you guys the conversations that you need. All right? But it doesn't make any sense. It's just, uh, okay. Let me play a little bit of this, guys. Let's rock and roll. Urgent search is underway for a missing Dallas ISD employee who hasn't been seen since last week. Police in Seagaville, southeast of Dallas, think she may be in danger. And Fox Wars' Dan Godwin is live at the Seagaville Police Department with the story. Dan. Lauren, friends and loved ones of 24-year-old Jennifer Mendez Olesco Aga understandably growing more concerned with each passing day. It has now been one week since she was last seen or heard from. The Seagaville Police Department is now leading this missing persons investigation, but Jennifer's family still conducting its own searches in hopes of finding clues. There are flyers being posted with Jennifer's pictures. Some are being handed out to drivers or anyone else who might help get the word out. Police say Jennifer was last seen on surveillance video on Wednesday of last week, dropping off a friend at a mobile home park in Seagaville. One thing I do want to point in, point, point out, because I, of course, I got to come in here for foul, for foul play, for <laughs> fair play, okay, uh, fair use and all that. But one thing I want to say, um, you're telling me that that's the only surveillance footage you have, the gas station, and that's it. So you're saying that the mobile home park doesn't have any security cams at all. None of the mobile homes have individually themselves have ring cameras at all. No one has a random security camera just pointing out into the middle of the, you know, in, into the commonplace area. Nothing like that. You tell me she just went to one spot that had surveillance footage and that's it or surveillance cameras and that that's it. No, no traffic lights. None of those. None. That doesn't make sense, guys. That don't make sense. Don't worry, I'm going to continue. Mm. When we found out that she never made it home that Wednesday night, it was kind of like a hint, like, hey, there's something going on. You know, she always makes it home. Uh, she was very punctual at work. Like, she didn't show up the next day. We're like, okay, this, this is not okay. Like, something's going on. Last Thursday, Jennifer's family members found her white 2015 Buick alongside a road in Mesquite. This spot is not on the way home from where she was last seen. There were no signs of damage or evidence that anything was wrong. A Seagaville police detective searched the vehicle and found Jennifer's wallet. Family members have been returning to where the car was discovered, searching a wooded area for anything that might help solve this mysterious disappearance. We mentioned Jennifer was last seen in Seagaville, but she is a resident of Dallas. Police here are getting help from the Texas Rangers on this case, but they're also asking anyone with information about what happened to come forward and contact them. Of course. And I I, I still am urging every single last one, y'all, if you are in the area or you know, you know the family, you know Jennifer, or you know of any information that's revolving around this, I urge you to please step forward and speak out, okay? Please contact your local authorities. Talk about this, et cetera, because let's be real. This woman has not gotten justice. And if she doesn't get justice, that means that somebody out here doing no good and plotting for the next tragedy right now as we speak. I hate to sound like some fear-mongering fear monger, but I'm not trying to fear monger. This is just the truth. The more we talk about it, the more we hashtag her name, the more we bring awareness about this information, the more... And hopefully the faster we get this, this monster locked up. Now, somebody just said in a, a super chat, um, which, by the way, thank you so much, my Miracle Mama, for the five. Yes, Pascal, there are inconsistencies in the timing of results for different cases for real. Eh, I'm not crazy. Thank you. 
Thank you, my miracle mama. I'm not crazy. Dag nabbit. I'm not crazy. It just doesn't make sense, right? At first, you're sitting there going, okay. Everybody else, it's pretty quick. Within days, they go, oh, we have the results. It is indeed. You know what I'm saying? We all know the information. They put that stuff out pretty quick. But this one, why did it take damn near three, four months, three, four uh, weeks? Damn. That don't make sense, guys. That just doesn't make sense. And the fact that they have information and the only thing that they've really put out here so far is surveillance footage from when she was pumping gas. That's it, y'all. That's it. Now, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you know, inside job or anything. I'm not sitting there trying to conspirize, all right? But still, odd. Don't you think? Uh, discerning 8, thank you so much for the comment on YouTube. Uh, we are forgetting that there was a car watching her that was parked in front of the store. She passed a vehicle coming out, and the person watched her. You know what? I'm interested. Let me let me play that again. Then let me see. Let me see if you let me see if I can see that because I don't see not that. But let's see. I'm down for entertaining everything. Let's see. OK, so there are two cars. Two cars. And of course, got to love these surveillance videos, right? Why is it always like with all the technology in the world, we got cameras that can cut through darkness and, and get away with all this digital graininess with ease, with like, like butter, okay? And yet we still get footage looking like this. I don't, it's like tr trying to, it's like a UFO, you know, sighting. It's so ridiculous. But let me roll this back. And I'm going to blow this up for you guys so we can all look at this because I'm all down for, for entertaining these ideas. There's two cars. I don't see anybody outside of these cars. But let's take a look. And then she goes back to her car. So I don't see it. Okay. I don't see it. But then I was also saying, like, the first time I saw it, I was like, who this dude? And who that dude right here? If you could see my mouse right here. Who that dude? And who that dude? For me, I'm going, okay, everybody's a suspect. And it seems like he is looking across and looking at her. But at the same time, I, I can't sit there and go, oh, that's the guy, if it's not the guy. You see what I'm saying? We can speculate all day long, but it still does not give me the answers that we need. They, they might have brought this guy in for questioning and this other guy for questioning, the ones that are just blobs, okay? Which is very frustrating. But he is looking at her. This guy right here is looking at her. He may be looking at her too. I don't know. Let's hold up. Let me play. He is looking over there. I mean, at least that's what it looks like. Hmm. Interesting indeed. Hmm. And then she drives off, but we don't see any other car. I mean, the, the footage that they gave us is trash, right? Because we don't see anybody else driving down, following her. And then these dudes right here, these guys over here just pulling up. I mean, this is, there's a whole catastrophe, catastrophe about to go down here.
but it still doesn't answer our question. It doesn't. Again, there's no solid evidence, evidence and no, no proof of these guys actually doing anything bad up to no good type stuff. You feel me? So that's the one thing that's really frustrating about this because I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, the, I look at people when I'm pumping gas too because everybody's, <laughs> everybody's a suspect in my mind. You cover enough of this stuff, man. You you get suited and booted, okay? You get prepared, okay? So when I'm out when I'm out here pumping gas and you know it's 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 a and it's a shady area, man. I'm my head is always on a swivel. I am not messing around, so I'm always looking at, at everybody, you know. Uh, so that might be the same thing here. I I don't know, but it's very very odd, nonetheless. But it still does not answer any questions for us. Still does not give us her justice, does not give us a culprit arrested, thrown in jail, and facing the music. And that's what we need. They really do need to start doing their due diligence, looking through her digital, looking through every surveillance video that they have, because they, I hope to God they have more than that. Man, I hope they have more than that, because this, this, that's not, that's not enough. OK, that's not enough, y'all. But nonetheless, we do have some not so great information. And it is that this young woman has lost her life. Again, I hope that the more that we talk about this, the more we bring it up, the more we can get justice faster for Jennifer Mendez Olascuaga. She was only 24 years old, y'all. She didn't deserve this, and nobody deserves this. But the creepy text messages give me the vibe that this is a really cocky son of a gun. This is one arrogant mother lover. You go out there and you're texting somebody, clearly you have an ego. Clearly you're proud of your work. Clearly, clearly, if it is this, <laughs> clearly this is somebody who really wanted to make sure that their work was known. And that's really messed up and sad and scary because that person is still out here on the loose, y'all. They're still out here on the loose. Anyway, guys, that is the video. That is the show. I got a, another one coming up to you guys in the next couple hours so be on the lookout for it i'm doing another live so because we're gonna watch we're gonna talk about this as a family because this one's wild wild as well so we got to talk about it as a family so be on the lookout for it it'll probably be back up or i probably will be back up live in the next two hours so be live with me let's chop it up let's talk let's have a good time oh also or let's have an informative time it's gonna be a tough one no matter what but let's talk about it anyway um but before we get going, let me just remind you guys, okay, I have a GoFundMe. Let me put this down really quick. I could really use y'all's help. I'd love to see it get past $2,000. I know that's a lot to ask, but I am trying to raise money for a, a, a holiday, holiday special that I'm doing in uh, December. This has to do with all these pre-recorded skits, parodies, we got some musical numbers, all that stuff, perform, musical numbers performed by other uh, uh, other artists as well. I got something really, really great coming up, and I could really use your help. So if you guys can please go over to my GoFundMe. The link is in the description box down below. Uh, and please go uh, donate if you can. That would really mean the, the world to me. Hold on. Let me... Uh, let me pull this up. Let me make sure. Really mean the, the. Hold on. Let me. Let me just pin this to the top. Thank you, S Dubs and Debbie. I do appreciate the uh, the. I do appreciate the love um, for the other channel as well. But please, I'm trying to get to at least two grand. Okay, if you guys can, a little bit goes a long way. A buck, ten ten dollars, five dollars, a hundred bucks, a thousand dollars. It doesn't matter. It really does help. I got something really, really special that I'm brewing, putting together as we speak right now. And I could really use y'all's help. So please go over it. The link is pinned to the top of the chat right now as we speak. Please go over there. 
uh, Berenice Rivas, thank you so much for the $5 super sticker. I really do appreciate it. Um, but if you guys can go over there, support, that would really, really mean the world to me. I'll remind you guys again, okay, uh, in a little bit in the next couple hours. But at the same time, if you guys can, like I said, a little bit goes a long way. And uh, the, you know, these cameras, these, these, these uh, crew members, these these actors and all that stuff, they're not cheap. And uh, I would love to make something really dope happen for this holiday season. You know, we just need something fun. Okay. Um, but I appreciate all y'all for being here again. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. Crush it. Make a scream out your name. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know your boys We're going to hard out here in these streets. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to do this on Facebook as well. Crush that follow button as well. And I will be back on in about two hours, so be on the lookout for it. There's another conversation, another case we need to talk about as a family. Be on the lookout for it. It is a wild one. We're going to be talking about it very soon. All right, guys, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys in the next show. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.